uh, on behalf of the Federation of Thai Industries to share with you the topic of Thailand rubber industry outlook and challenge. There are a couple of things that I will show you as far as the statistics are concerned, as well as the outlook and challenge, uh, particularly for the rubber product industry. Okay, so uh, some background of FTI, the Federation of Thai Industries. In Thai, we call Sapa Usahakam, okay? So uh, basically, we are consisted of 45 industrial groups, and there are 18 work groups for industrial topics that are important, 74 province, provincial chapters, and some affiliated institutes. And the FTI serves the government in terms of following up developments of government regulations and policy, coordinating among members with relevant government and non-government agency, advocating towards the best interests of the industry and stakeholders. The last one, we hold this dearly because uh, we think we are the uh, coordination uh, for the government and the rubber industry. I mean, 45 industries, and rubber is just one of the 45 industries. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, basically, back to the basic. Before we have rubber product, we have to look at the rubber raw material in Thailand. And uh, as far as the rubber plantation is concerned, the supply side, uh, we have um, 3.6 hectare of land, and uh, Indonesia has 20, and um, uh, China has 7.1, and Malaysia 6, right? So basically, Thailand is the uh, world's largest producer of natural rubber at 4.4 uh, million ton, metric ton per year uh, as of last, last year. And uh, number two is uh, Indonesia at about uh, 3 million metric ton as far as the natural rubber is concerned. And number three, um, uh, surpassing Malaysia recently, that is Vietnam, now becoming number three at about 1 million metric ton per year, okay? So uh, if you look at the natural rubber supply side, there is a shift between the world's biggest producers, and that means uh, Vietnam is coming up, all right? Um, now, let's look at the, some of the uh, rubber product items uh, that uh, consumes a lot of rubber, natural rubber, okay? In metric ton, uh, tire is always at the top of the rubber product. Um, uh, we can see that uh, out of the 4 million ton that I talked about earlier, uh, about uh, almost 300,000 metric tons are used in the tire production, right? And uh, the other thing is coming up also the thread that you find in your garments, the elastic thread, right? Which is uh, ranking number two also coming up from three or four uh, in previous years. And the statistics for 2016 and uh, 2016, 20, 2016, 2017 are basically the same figure, right? and thread, gloves, uh, motorcycle tire, rubber band, and so on. Okay, the production here that we talked about, about 4.4 million ton, and that means Thailand use about 13% uh, of its natural rubber production, and we export the rest 87% as raw material, all right? Now, import. Also, we do a lot of import as well. Um, this is in terms of baht, okay? Uh, about 11,000 million baht. That means 11 billion baht, right? Also in tires. So you can see that uh, tire is on the top of the list as far as uh, consumption is concerned and as well as uh, importing is of the product is concerned, okay? Right. Okay, so when we look at the uh, rubber product industry and we want to try to predict or forecast the trend of the industry for rubber product, 
uh, I have to say that we have to look at the vehicle sales, right? Because uh, as you as you see, tires are um, an important part of uh, vehicles, and vehicle sales is always the uh, driving factor for the uh, rubber consumption. And uh, we can see that there growth, consistent growth of rubber, uh, I mean vehicle production in the world, uh, leading by China, USA, Japan, Germany, South Korea, India, and in this case, Thailand is around number 14 uh, for since 2011, right? And the whole year, the world has seen uh, a, to uh, a total production of about 80 million units of vehicles in 2011, but as of now, it has become 90 million units of vehicles recently, and the figure for each country has been expanding. But notably for China, it has been exponential. There is an exponential growth. Uh, as we can see on the next slide that I uh, focus on recent years, for also uh, the top uh, producers of vehicles, we can see that China is at uh, 28 million units. And last year has uh, decreased a little bit to 24 million, but the total world production is about 90 million units. Okay, Thailand from f number 14 is up to rankings to number 12. And what, suggests, what this suggests is the rubber production for tires in Thailand has been continuing in the growth stage. Okay, and we will continue to see this growth for quite some time, at least in the next few years, all right? Okay. All right, okay. The last two slides will be focusing on the outlook and challenges. Okay, I will go one by one as far as the current outlook is concerned. Um, as I said, the world's biggest producer in summary, 40%, 14 percent domestically used, and remaining is exported as raw material. All right, and many rubber products are price controlled by the government. This is the fact that may you may not be aware of right now, particularly if you are from uh, foreign countries and you are willing to open up the market for rubber products. The first thing that you have to know, as far as the regulations are concerned, is whether your rubber products are regulated. For price, okay, the Ministry of Commerce is the regulator in this in this sense. And um, for example, tires for truck uh, and also for uh, pickup truck and also motorcycle tires of some sizes, some common sizes, right? A few sizes per each type are being regulated for price. So whenever you have you want to change your price in the market, you have to apply for it at the Ministry of Commerce. The failure to do that will have some legal consequence if they know. Okay, so better do it without their knowledge or play safe by doing it the right way, right? I'm just teasing. You have to do it. It's the regulation. Okay, and when you apply for price change, most of the time the answer is no <laughs> in Thailand. So, but you have to do work around by perhaps uh, making up a new model number, changing the, you know, the product line, uh, so, sort of that, and you change your product items and then you set your new price. However, you have to uh, give them some details of your pricing whenever you, you set a new product, all right? So this is something that you have to keep in mind if, if you are from foreign country. Um, and rubber is not only the product that, are, that is controlled by this price control scheme. Uh, there are about um, more than 100 uh, consumer items that are under this, including something like eggs and uh, uh, vehicles as well. I mean, the vehicle, the whole, the whole car is also price controlled. So whenever you want to change the price, you have to uh, be careful. Um, Thailand is no longer a low-cost country. Minimum wage rose 35% uh, 
around 39.5 percent on April the first of 20, 2012, right? And it uh, became 10 US dollar per day. But this year it is about uh, maybe 11 dollar per, per per day. Okay, so. Um, this is the minimum wage, and I, I trust that most of the manufacturers in the uh, rubber industry are paying higher than this because of the labor shortage. And we, on this ground, we have seen uh, some trends regarding automation, right? Uh, smarter machines, smarter pr uh, process control, or or some uh, new investment in. Uh, the industry 4.0 uh, aspect uh, has been implemented recently. So in this sense, there is a very good chance of market potential for machineries and automation system for the rubber industry. Also applicable to other industries as well because we are in big shortage of labor. All right. And before this, what we have been trying to alleviate the problem of labor shortages, we import some foreign labor from uh, neighboring countries to Thailand, right? But now, as you can see, uh, neighboring countries, they also are de developing their industries. Uh, they are trying to um, uh, expand their industrial base at home also. So, there are job openings back home for these foreign workers as well. And the, the other thing is Thailand's government has been tightening up on the foreign labor regulations, right? And this, is, this has become serious because normally in the past, the government is, uh, was kind of closing one eye and let the foreign laborers coming in so easily and uh, needs no... Registration, the registration is a must, but it has been rarely enforced, right? Until recently, the government is trying to crack down on illegal employment for foreign workers, and the deadline is the end of this month. Okay, so if you are operating in Thailand and you are using um, foreign labor and you don't know about this, please make sure that you consult with your uh, uh, lawyers about this. So uh, at the end of this month, there will be some tightening up of this regulation. So what does that mean? That means we will suffer even more labor shortage. All right. And even if you can find one, the wages will not be the same. It's going to be higher and higher from now on. All right. So th that can be expected. Next. Thailand is net, net exporter. About 50 to 70% of rubber products are exported. Rubber products that are made in Thailand in any factory, most of the factory export their product up to 50 to 70%. So what's the implication of this? The outlook is Thailand industrial um, success or development depends on the global economy, right? So you have to keep a, a good eye on the global economic trend, right? Particularly for tires because it's ranked in the top, right? So tires are used in uh, both developed and developing countries, right? So if you, on the one hand, see some economic slowdown in the US, in Europe, or perhaps in, in Japan for a long time, you can be so sure that the consumption of rubber tires are not so growing, right? And uh, it can affect this portion of export market. And that force the manufacturers to lower their production, right? And, um, but luckily, on the other hand, in developing economies such as um, China, uh, India, and all, all the BRIC, BRIC country, right? Brazil, Russia, and so on. They are expanding, more or less, particularly in China. So uh, we can say that 
if the manufacturers can tap into these big markets, big expanding markets, uh, the portion of export of rubber tires or rubber product can have some some market to, to get it. All right. Next, slow rubber product industrial standard development and also slightly enforced industrial standards. So rubber standard, particularly rubber tire industrial standard, has become an important issue because the um, new trends in Europe and the U.S. that requires uh, better quality in terms of rolling resistance, right? That's the first one. And also uh, wet grip for the braking distance and also the noise level of the tire. This can be viewed as the requirement for the export market, right? If you cannot meet these three new standards, how can you export to such markets, right? So in Thailand, uh, the FTI has been trying to promote this new industrial standard to the government agencies, the standard agencies, to uh, look at it. And fortunately, after working with the government agencies for a few years, now we have pushed the new standard that will take care of the wet grip, roaring resistance, and noise right, into the Thai standard system. And the next step is to make it compulsory, as in Europe. So there will be uh, some steps to, to achieve the compulsory standard. But now the standard is out, and a lot of manufacturers will uh, follow through this standard. What does that mean? It means that some technology on the plant, right, particularly mixing, particularly tire engineering, will have to be revised and improved. And I believe that um, exhibitors in this uh, exhibition can provide some solutions for this technology that we can do to conform to these standards. However, on the other side of the standard issue, the enforcement of industrial standard in Thailand is a little bit lacking, right? But the government agency is, is trying to keep up with the standard enforcement, right? So we are trying to stress on this issue as well because if you have a very good standard to be the guideline for the industrial development and manufacturing, but you don't have a good, uh, I mean, good enforcement of the standard, what, what would happen, do you know? There will be a big influx of cheap imports that, that do not conform with the industrial standard. And that's not a, a good thing for Thai consumers and also for the overall um, rubber manufacturing industries, all right? So it's not sustainable. So we are trying to keep them working on this ground. Government is attentive to rubber ecosystem. Yeah, because rubber is the political crop. Every time the rubber farmers are staging some demonstrations, right? The government is feeling the heat, and uh, there are big bodies of rubber plantations uh, in the south and now expanding to the northeast and to the north. So overall, Thailand, so to speak. So, and and uh, rubber farmers are the political base for local politicians as well. And national government has to listen, right, because it's the livelihood of the people in the agricultural sector. So, whatever is good for the rubber industry environment has always been receiving good attention from the government. So, in this sense, we are trying to push some uh, infrastructure development for the rubber industry product. One example is uh, that we have done successfully is the um, asking for the budget for the testing tracks for the new standard, okay, for the wet grip, for the roaring resistance, for the noise, right? And these new testing tracks are under construction right now. It's about 100 kilometers from Bangkok, right? And it will be finished in about two to three years. So after its completion, 
uh, testings on these standards can be done locally. And this is a good news for not only for certification for export, but also for the research and development community in Thailand who can have a better access and cheaper access to the testing. Because, you know, testing is about learning from failure. When you have to do it like uh, do it and fail, do it and fail, and then you learn new things, right? And then you keep developing and keep uh, improving your formulation or engineering of the tires so that one day you can achieve the higher level of your product. So we, have, we don't have that in, in the past or in the current time, but we expect that to be available in a few years' time. Okay, lastly, free trade agreements remain a threat rather than opportunity from, from Thailand. So what do I mean by this? Um, you know, we are all having a free trade agreement with every country, right? Particularly in ASEAN, there are 10 countries. In countries in ASEAN. But these trade agreements open up a green light for imports to come to Thailand quite easily. And as I mentioned, the lacking of um, industrial standard enforcement doesn't help this either because imports can be coming in very easily. Uh, and also tariff-free, that means no import tax. And th this is uh, a threat for local manufacturers, either be a local Thai manufacturers or perhaps uh, foreign subsidiaries who are in Thailand, they have to compete with imports that are coming from the other nine ASEAN countries and also including some outside of the region countries like uh, we have some trade agreements with Australia, Japan, Korea, now uh, we're talking about some countries in Europe and also uh, the U.S., but now recently uh, after Trump took the presidency, that has been uh, cut short. However, it seems like now import is coming in more easily. If you are the manufacturer of chemicals, you would know that, right? Because now you can import a lot of chemicals into Thailand tax-free, including from China, right? And... Uh, on the other hand, for export, when we export to other countries, right, one thing that you have to keep in mind is every country is trying to protect their interest in terms of trade. And many countries are very active on this ground. So they set very high standards. They enforce uh, their industrial standards very strictly. That means they will stop your container at the port and do some uh, uh, sampling of the product in the container. And if it passes the standard, right, then the container can be cleared from the customs. Right? There is no such practice in Thailand, as far as my knowledge is concerned, at this time. The custom clearance in Thailand can be done by documents only, even if it's compulsory standard that require testing. But there is no need for individual testing to be done for each shipment. They can use documentations from the standard office and present it to the customs to clear the importation process. Uh, this is good for importation, but when we export, we don't have this kind of treatment, right? We always face with some restrictive import process. So this is something that you have to bear in mind. Uh, if you are operating in Thailand, uh, this is something you have maybe experiencing. Yeah? No. Basically, uh, in theory, yes, because we are free trade. And particularly uh, in ASEAN, uh, we agree that all product items, I mean all, 100%, can be crossed the border with no tax. But in practice, uh, we treat rubber and rice as sensitive items because it's involved with uh, a big population of the farmers. And every time you have to apply for the permit in order to import, 
and every time you apply for the permit, they will turn you down. If you apply for a permit for a small amount or small quantity of rubber for testing purpose, for educational purpose, yes, you can. But if you are importing tons of rubber or rice into Thailand, they wouldn't allow you. But the deadline for ASEAN to be open for 100% with no exception of highly sensitive item is approaching. When we reach that day, we better have a better explanation to our neighbor country, neighboring countries why we don't allow rubber to come in. So that's a political issue. As I pointed out, it's a political crop as well. So we expect some difficulty during that time, right? But hopefully the market would be open uh, to the free trade and that would benefit to everyone, right? Okay, so this is the schemes that I talked about earlier. Uh, so this, I put this under challenge, right? Because this is just starting for Thailand and um, this Thai leveling scheme in um, rolling resistance, wet grip and noise, right? It's, it has the label like this that you have to put on your tire, right? And the consumer will judge whether they want to buy a tire with rolling resistance, grade B or A or even G. I think no one would try to buy something from in this level, right? Yeah. So in the near future in Thailand, we will implement something like this as well. After the testing tracks are finished, we expect a few years after that, we will try to push for the... Um, uh, new standard scheme for Thailand and at the end we will try to put it as compulsory standard as well. And this is the other examples from the other part of the world. I'm sorry it's in Thai, but this is from Japan, so similar scheme. This is from uh, South Korea and this is from the United States. Right? So you can see that these are new challenges and I'm, I, I, I can tell you that it's not easy to achieve good grades on all aspects of these new standards because they are contradictory to a certain point. But again, technology uh, can be acquired uh, to achieve this. Okay. I think that would be all. So I hope uh, I give you some interesting information. And uh, again, uh, in ASEAN, we, we still think that Thailand is a very good destination for rubber industry uh, development, right? Uh, we see a lot of foreign investors coming in into Thailand for rubber uh, industry uh, manufacturing, right? Um, we have a, a very good quality uh, workforce, right? And infrastructure is developing in the right direction as far as the world standard is concerned. So that would be all for me. Uh, in, and if you have any question, I will be happy to answer. All right, if not, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.